Hi guys! So my last wrap up of the year is coming a little early in 2019, but I was traveling for the holidays, so oh well. I ended up reading three books in December and they were all just a little okay. So let's start from the beginning. The first book I finished was An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This is a sci-fi book about a girl who makes first contact with aliens and catches it in a viral video. It has a lot of science, but it's not unapproachable. I think the normal person, the average person, would be able to understand what's happening at least enough to enjoy the story still. But it mainly explores fame culture in the world and social media and the internet and viral videos and internet fame. And it's more of a commentary on those aspects of society rather than a heavily scientific alien book. I actually had a bit of a problem with that aspect of the writing where it felt more like it was just a list of messages and introspective thoughts about fame and the internet, rather than being a cohesive story in itself. The way that it's interspersed with these little commentaries about society kind of brought me out of the story and made me realize, oh, I'm reading a book that's meant to have messages to get across rather than completely allowing myself to get immersed in the novel. So it wasn't my favorite reading experience for that reason. I also didn't really like the main character, April May. I couldn't really empathize with her. I can see how people would be able to connect with her, but I just personally didn't and it made it a little hard to read from her perspective because she just kept getting on my nerves. So there was that aspect of it too that also brought me out of the story. But I did really enjoy the side characters. It was just the main character that I didn't really gel with. <laughs> However, I think all of the characters were pretty well done. They were all developed and had their own personalities. They didn't seem flat in any way. It's just a matter of personal preference when it came to April, May that I just... She didn't work for me. I thought the plot was a little bit slow. I was definitely more interested in the later part of the book when we started learning more about the dreams. That was the most interesting part for me. So a combination of the plot being a little slow, me not really enjoying the characters, and not liking the writing style with all of its little reflections, making it sound like a list of observations about society rather than a book or a story, just made this book a bit of a miss. There were aspects that I liked, so I still gave it 3 out of 5 stars, but I think it's just an okay book. The next book I finished was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which is a YA fantasy book set in 1800s Russia where folklores and fairy tales are real. I know absolutely nothing about Russian culture or history, so I was a little bit confused in the beginning when parts were mentioned about tributes being paid and there's a bunch of princes and I had no idea how the social and political structure worked, but that wasn't too important to the book, at least this book. It's the first book in a series, so I don't know about later on, but for this specific book it wasn't super important. It just threw me off a little because I didn't really understand what was happening and how everything was set up. But on the other hand, not knowing anything about Russian culture means everything was new and interesting to me. I loved learning about the different fairy tales. I loved the world. The world was incredible. I don't know how much of it is history and how much of it is the fantasy element of this book, but I enjoyed every minute of it. It was written so beautifully, it was so atmospheric, and the descriptions were just perfect. There were so many lines describing the scenery outside that I ended up noting because they were just so elegant. I loved Vasya and the Chayirti? I don't know how to say that word, but I thought they were really interesting. And Vasya as a character was very strong and an enjoyable person to follow. The other characters I found to be a little bit bland, but it wasn't too bad. I actually had more of an issue with the plot because it was extremely slow paced. I don't think it was organized very well. This book has a different construction from the books that I'm used to reading in YA fantasy where it doesn't just follow the main character through 
whatever important part of their life. This one actually starts from before she's born and it's following everyone in the family in the beginning. So the first two thirds of the book were mainly just backstory following the family and nothing really happens until the last third. And I found it kind of boring. I normally really enjoy Slice of Life, but Something about the number of characters and them not being super interesting or well-developed enough made me not want to pick up the book as much until I got to the last part where everything was interesting. I was basically waiting the whole book for that last part to start because you knew it was going to happen, but you didn't know when and I didn't realize it'd be so late in the book and it was a little bit frustrating. I think it was setting up for the rest of the series a little too much. There were characters that you were following in the beginning that just completely disappeared halfway through the book and you never heard from them again. And I know they're probably going to play some role later on in the trilogy, but having them take up so much time in the beginning of the book and then not have anything about them at all by the end was just weirdly organized. I know a lot of people have problems with the first book in a series where it's mainly world building and plot development, and normally I don't have that problem. I tend to love the first book in series because I get to learn all about the world and that's the most interesting part for me, but I could definitely see where people were coming from in the case of this book. And even with that excuse that it's building up for the rest of the series, there wasn't enough world building itself. There's so many questions that I have about the world that hopefully will be answered later on, but I would have liked a little bit more if you're gonna spend two thirds of the book just going over family history. Another issue I had with the plot was the end was kind of anticlimactic and pretty unsatisfying. I wasn't a big fan of it, so I don't know. There were just a lot of problems I had with this book, but at the same time I really loved the descriptive writing and the world that it's building. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars and I will be continuing the series. I know the third book comes out this month if it hasn't already come out already. The last book I read in December was Maggie, Volume 33 by Shinobu Otaka. Maggie is an Arabian Nights retelling, but it's a lot more complex, especially in the latter half of this series, and I'm personally not a fan of it. This volume was very Sinbad-centric, and yet the characters didn't really seem congruous with the ones earlier in the series. I think the plot is getting a little out of hand. It's getting really confusing and kind of trippy because it's starting to deal with multiple universes and gods and different dimensions and it's just getting to be too much. I think in the beginning the plot was really tightly knit and everything kind of fell into place nicely, but now it seems like everything is being tacked on to the end like it wasn't planned from the start. So it's kind of unraveling and throwing out all the previous rules and that's kind of sad. I really liked the beginning but I just don't think it's heading in the right direction anymore. I think it should have stopped earlier but I'm still invested in it. I'm still gonna finish the series. I have three volumes left to read so might as well. I would definitely recommend the anime over the manga even though the anime doesn't finish the story because how it's finishing the story in the manga is not that satisfying anyway. I also gave this 3 out of 5 stars and I will be waiting for the next volume from my library. So overall it wasn't a great reading month for me, everything was a 3 out of 5 stars, but I still have hope for January. I I'm definitely, for sure, 100% finishing The Mists of Avalon this month. I need to finish it this month. I only have about 100 pages left. I need to get on that because I have been reading that for way too long. And I also started Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, which I am really enjoying, but I had to get it in a physical copy because I tried listening to it on audiobook and it was just too British for me and I couldn't understand what was happening, so. I have the physical copy now, and I'm really excited to read it. Actually, I should just show you. Here we go. So, Mists of Avalon by Marian Zimmer Bradley, and Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. These are the books I am currently reading, and hopefully I will finish them and be able to get to plenty more before January ends. I, if you look at them, you can kind of see I have so little left in this book. I'm on page 760. 
and there are 876, so like 16, 116 pages, I mean, left in this one, and then I just started this. I'm probably 50 pages in, or about, yeah, out of, oh, there's a map at the end of this book. Is this, oh, this is just the uh, London Underground. Cool. Um, how many pages? Like 318. Okay, so this shouldn't take too long, and I'm really liking it. I love how it seems to be a love story to London because I really love London too. So, yes, that's what I am currently reading. That's what I read in December. Let me know what you read at the end of last year and what you're super excited to get to this year, and I will see you later. Bye!